Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. I'm just the guy that works here. <laughs> and right now I'm working on this 1968 Chevrolet Nova. It's a Yenko Tribute, I guess you could say. It's got a six liter LS with a four speed. And we're doing some engine modifications and some other things to it, but we're switching gears. We're gonna focus on the interior and what's going on in the trunk here or the lack thereof. See, the outside looks spectacular. The engine bay is starting to come around. It's looking really good. The trunk, not so much, and either does the interior. It needs a little bit of work. There's some things that are missing and whatever else. So let's jump in and make this car as a whole look sharp. We've got a lot of work to do back here because I'm actually going to make a custom trunk. That's right. We're gonna be doing some board work, some carpeting, you name it, to completely transform this thing. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's dig in. There's holes back here. There's holes. Hmm. So if you're new to the channel, this is great information. And if not, just a reminder, we're giving away this car right now through December 2nd. You can get entered for a chance to win this Nova and $15,000 cash. Swing over to vicegripgarage.com and snag yourself up a forehead awning, back rag, jacket, pullover, hoodie, stickers, whatever you want. And every $5 you spend gives you one shot for a chance to win this and that cash. Of course, all the rules and small print and all of that and no purchase necessary is also over there at the website. So let's start back here at the trunk. I gotta give you a close look at this thing. There's some big holes we gotta patch. I think I gotta move a wire. We're gonna have to do some metal work to start this off. And then we'll get into some of the um, upholstery side. It's not really carpeting. I can lay carpet in a trailer house. Why can't I lay carpet in a trunk of a Nova? It's pretty close. So there's definitely evidence, you know, someone's put quarter panels on this. They've played around in the trunk. They did a lot of metal work on this thing. And for some unknown reason, there's these holes back here in the trunk. And we just can't have that. We're going to be getting moisture and dirt and leaves and all sorts of stuff back up in there. And it's going to deteriorate all of this hard work that somebody did. So before we even start talking about whether we're gonna coat this or rubber it or carpet it or whatever, we've got to patch this up and uh, get that taken care of. I'm gonna crawl in here, get a closer look, probably never be able to get back out, and then come up with a, not really a plan. We're just gonna figure it out as we go. So we do have some speaker wiring here. I'm gonna leave that. Uh, there are no speakers or anything back here, and I'm not gonna be putting any speaker boxes or anything in. Whoever wins this, if they want to, the wire is ran and uh, they can kind of figure that out. But I did notice this, which is also something we're gonna have to fix. That is the 12 volt fuel pump wire running through a rusty hole below that hole. So now I've got to lift the car up. We're probably gonna end up cutting that and uh, we're gonna have to figure out a better way to get the fuel pump wire to the fuel pump before we start cleaning this up. It looks like they cut it open with a pickaxe. So we're gonna have to do some hammering and smoothing and cleaning up. And uh, we're gonna weld in a plate. We're gonna use some primer and uh, seam seal and get this closed off correctly. And we have to clean out in there and do some other stuff as well. Up under the rig here, there is our fuel pump wire. I need to clean this up too. Um, not necessary, 42 miles too long. We can make that look a lot better. Also just noticed they put, it's hard to see, this is an air shock nozzle, which means there's a valve in the trunk, which means there's a hole already in the trunk that's already drilled. I mean, that's, uh, we can fix that. Another thing a guy's gonna do here is just go ahead and take the 37 seconds and route the brake line through the fastener and clip that's sitting right here. And then I'll take off the bracket on the other side that's 
not being used, and that'll clean it up. I have the power wire cut to the fuel pump. We'll pull that back through the trunk, disconnect that. I have to find a grommet or something to put that through. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I need to take some measurements because if we fast forward, I'm gonna be putting a board right across there to seal off that trunk. And I don't want that line to be interfering with that. So I've got to be cognizant. Yeah, you're right. We'll just jam it through and see what happens. Sorry about that. Anyway, there's the bracket that's off. I bet those holes were for the air shocks and they used just one of the holes on that side so they didn't have to take the Schrader up out, excuse me, had me too many Takis, muy fuego, Woo. you know what I mean? Let this open. Come on now. There we go. Get it over the line. Put it over here. Every time I say over the line, I want to yell Donnie after it, but I don't think that's right. Okay, let's see. Put this clamp back on. Okay. Then, I'd spend 32 seconds and just straighten out what looks like a slip and slide in the backyard of a pasture. Okay, that didn't make sense, but it's looking better. Now, bring it back down again take a look. Yeah, I somehow didn't notice that right there. So we can uh, pull that out. I'm going to get that out of there, but I think I'm going to wait to wire that back in until we get all the metal work because there's going to be grinding and welding and everything else. And that wire will be laying right across. So we'll just boop pin that up for now. Okay, now I gotta cl climb in here with some hammers and some uh, flappa discs, whatnots, and start cleaning up these openings, and then we can start taking some measurements. Well, guys got the Schrader cut out and cleaned up these openings. Had to, you know, persuade them a little bit to get down out of the way. Now I'll crawl back in with a notepad and marker, take some measurements, and uh, we're gonna cut out some patch panels for those to get that sealed up. Guy got to thinking, can a guy get it from back here? So I don't gotta crawl in there again. Sure, we'll try. I'm gonna go with four. We got left and right, so we're going to go four inches there. Uh, five and a half, five and a half. Five and a half. 
five and a half. So that makes it easy. Well, for something this small, really no need to use the table. I'll just, uh, you know. Stuff and things. There's four. And five plus five is nine, plus two point fives together is obviously eleven total. Right? Okay, boom. Then, oh, yeah, then we have to do a La da da do, la da da do. Got to get my glasses. There we go. Now I can't see nothing. Well, I guess I'm back. I forgot I wasn't done. And now we'll clean the edges up, get all the oil and stuff off of this metal. New glove goofing tonight. Finally burned holes through my other ones. There we go. Two plates. Well, the guy's got a couple of coats of weldable primer on this drying right now. We can't get to the bottom side of this. It's in that cavity. So I want to make sure we're protecting the metal there before we weld that into place. Great practice if you're doing floor pans or braces or anything like that on a vehicle or fenders or whatever. If you can't get to the back side, primer it up somehow. It'll help you out. Okay, now let's go clean out that cavity. I did see a little bit of dirt and debris in there. 
So let's get a vacuum hose in there and make sure we get that as clean as possible before we cover it up. Vacuum stuff and vacuum things. Better oh, than I thought, actually. I thought it sounded like marbles in a steel barrel, but it's pretty good. Well, that's all tacked in. Not the prettiest thing I've done, but from sitting way back here with no helmet and going, ah, it's, you know, but it's a lot better than a gaping hole. And really it doesn't matter because we're going to be seam sealing that in here in a bit. And pretty much factory floors, that's all I did was stitch weld it and booger it up. So on to the next one over here, basically same thing, rinse and repeat and uh, let them cool down a little bit. I gotta clean this up, wipe it out. There's still a few steps before we get that seam seal on. Plates are cooling. Gonna run the vacuum through there again. Got a list of the breasts and stuff like that. Then we're gonna spritz some rebuild black on it. Let that dry. All that sanding on the flat disc and so Guy's got two heavy coats of rebuild black in there, so I'm gonna have to wait a few minutes and let this dry up. Well, that paint is drying, it's time to put in some seam sealer, and basically it's looks like a bunch of putty or Play Doh. And you could brush this on with a paintbrush, try to make it look pretty, but it, it all kind of self levels and looks pretty decent. If you ever get time, look in one of your rigs at the factory seam seal. They smeared that on in a heartbeat as she was coming down the line, just boop. There it went. I'm just using a paint stick. This stuff's from uh, Eastwood. I've been using this stuff for a long time, familiar with it. So I'm just gonna use this, work it in. This will get in all the cracks, little holes, all of that stuff and give us a nice weatherproof seal around these patches. Okay. In this particular case, it doesn't even need to be that pretty. All of this is gonna be hidden and covered. I would rather be liberal with this and know that we're gonna have a really nice, good seal on the trunk, then try to make it look pretty and end up with a leak. I've also got a hole on the other side that is small enough. I can just run some of this in it and that'll patch that for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there goes that hole.
It's like a cake frosting. Really. I don't know about you fellers though. I prefer the whipped cream frosting over the cake. Uh, what is it? <sighs> Not whipped cream, but there's another kind of frosting. What is that called? Um, cheese? Cream cheese frosting? No, that can't be right. I don't know. I don't build cakes. Alright? Well, it's about an hour for this seam seal to dry, so we got to keep the feet just moving whenever possible. Forward, uphill, in the snow, both ways. You know the deal. So let's jump inside of this thing and uh, start putting together this interior. There's some things missing, just some things that need fixed, but no doubt we're going to make it look better. So this interior is pretty decent and there's some good stuff in it. The seats are gorgeous, the door cards are new. They've got new handles and levers and rollers and badges and the dash. And then there's some things that just need finished and touched up. And some of them are little, they're minor, but they just got right under my left hoof. Like pedal pads, they're missing. I pick some up, I'm gonna put them on quick. I've got to reinstall the kicker over there and the sill plate. That's just from doing all the wiring and stuff like that. The big thing is the center console here. They had a center console in here. It was a custom built one. It was just squared, bulky, wasn't fastened down, didn't fit the car. And I searched high and low, well, maybe we'll put kind of a stock style manual transmission center console in and went back and forth, maybe make another custom one. But then I'm looking at it and I'm going, you know what? This is what I did on my Chevelle and I loved it. Just a bare floor with a shifter boot, no center console. It's clean, it's more room, there's more carpet showing, and it'll look nice. And I decided, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and do that for now. And if one of y'all win this and you wanna do something fancy in there, you go right ahead. I picked up an all black shifter boot. It's got a black trim ring. And uh, I think this is an actual leather shifter boot. Better be for what they charge for this thing. Moses sandals. So let's get all that taken care of really quick. And then I think we got to do some surgery on that seat and we're just going to keep pawing through. I think I've also got some visors and some other stuff as well. Pop these on quick, shouldn't take but a few minutes. Oh, these are nice and rubbery, actually. These are from Classic Industries. Yeah, that one are nice. Normally, you get these from some companies. The, the rubber is so darn hard, you can't even flex them. And these are nice and pliable, but they're still thick. There we go. Big improvement. So a guy didn't even know the shifter ring boot thing worked this way. I just guessed and got a nice one, but it's a really slick design. There's a belay base that goes in here. And then there's a nice fancy top that fastens into this. Cause I was looking at eight fasteners going, that's a lot of fasteners and how am I gonna make that look nice? But all we gotta do is fasten this down. Of course, we'll just snip a self-tapper in there real quick. That's how I've been putting these in for 20 years. <laughs> yep. Gotta go fast. You can't let that carpet get snagged up in there. Pressure and just hit her. Don't think about it. Just hit it. went out the car. Missing a little snap ring on this. Driving me bananas. Might need to get a longer one for here. Yeah, that's too short. There's a weird hump in the floor here. 
Let me get a longer one for there. And then we'll put the top on. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, now, surprising how well I fit in this car versus like a first gen Firebird or um, Camaro. It's interesting. Any hoose, we got 57,000 screws. I'm gonna lose 56,999. We're gonna put this boot on, lose that. This is gonna be the tough part is I've got to get this around enough where it's gonna be squeezed everywhere, but not get in the way of the fastener holes. How does a guy do that? Tight fit. I think I'm going to need a mallet. Tanya Harding 200. Yeah. Kneecap, kneecap, shin, femur, kneecap, kneecap. There. And then maybe these little doodabbers will draw down the rest of the way. Okay. I can see why it was so much now. This is significantly better than those rinky like chrome ring ones that are made out of 37 gauge steel. And then a boot that was someone's shirt that they just kind of cut in the shape of a boot. This seems to be significantly better. Well, give me an hour and a half. I gotta get all these hardware pieces in. Last thing a guy's gotta do is put the ball on. You know, I've had some with the ball and I've had some with the, uh, the T-handle, you know what I mean? But there we go. That looks nice, it's neat, it's clean, it's simple, functional. I do all my Chevelles when I do my conversions. This is how I set them up. Just because I don't like stuff, you know, in my legs and, and whatever else. So, pedals done, shifter done. Not much to see over here. I'm going to pop that kick panel in quick and then put the uh, sill plate in. The old body by Fisher. <laughs> all right. Snag this back in. It's got our speaker later in here. Custom audio sound, 100 watts. This basically slides forward. And then it's held. Why am I having such difficulty? Oh, this air box. Back here. Fittage, wireage, get this carpet nice and tucked. There we go. Boop, AC, boop, AC off. Speaking of, some of you notice this doesn't have a heater. Yes, pretty common with resto mods or engine swap vehicles. That stuff gets deleted pretty much straight away. Uh, mostly for just room stuff like that when you're doing engine swaps. It can obviously be done with the stuff in there, but it's a lot more difficult, time consuming. The great news is there's companies out there like, well, pick one, but uh, Vintage Air is at the top of my head. They have a flat fire, or a, yeah, firewall set up, and the rest of the stuff goes under the dash. And you can get AC back and heat back. 
I just don't got the time. We're thrashing on this to get this done before December 2nd. Will's doing a bunch of other fun projects. But that'll leave something to tinker on for whoever gets this rig. Okay, sill plate back. This, this isn't going to stay like this. I just have it hooked up like that hanging. When we get to that point, we can do some monitoring. We're going to have to do a TPS auto reset, all that stuff. There we go. That's back. I guess I don't need an impact in here anymore, do I? Probably not. So we got this rig and it's got a brand new headliner in it, as you can see, it's immaculate. But they didn't put the visors or any of the hardware or even cut the holes in. So we're gonna get that done next. I did the captain side already. I got these beautiful reproductions, new hinge, all new hardware, everything. And they look nice. So we'll go over and uh, do the drinker side. So the most terrifying part is you've got to find this hole and uh, most GM cars is pretty obvious because there's like a bulkhead compartment here. But if you push your finger into it, push it in like that. I'm going to take a knife, cut an X in here, then I can set the hinge in and then use that as a template where those screws will be. And if you can find one, then you can easily find the others. Okay, guy's got his professional headliner tool. Nope. And, uh, just like I was saying, find the circle. This is the most terrifying part. You know, check, maybe check again. You know, just to, just to be sure. We'll cut that. Jam that in there. Then we got to go fishing. So we'll take one of these. And sometimes you can look in here. Okay, there's one right there. So if a guy can get that one, we'll be off and, you know, walking. Maybe, maybe a brisk walk. There we go. Whoops. No wonder it's looking weird. I got this on backwards. I'm sitting here thinking, this shape looks funny. There we go. Fred was sitting there yelling, Derek, you got it on, you just can't put it in that way, it's backwards. Uh, I figured it out, it just took me a minute. Then, we just take this one for a walk. Boom, there it is. Oh. Woo! Good thing I do the yoga. No, that's definitely never happened at all. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Wonder what Carrie Underwood's doing tonight. Hmm. I don't know. Then we will jam the bushing in. We will jam the actual visor in. We got the visor jam bolt. Bring this in, and you really got to give them, give, giving, there we go, that looks really good, oh, I better give her some more, extra give, 
All right. Pfizer's in. Starting to look a lot better in here. Just little things. So on the drinker side seat here, Jessica figured out that there's only three holes. There's one there, here, and here, but nothing here. Wasn't even drilled, so we gotta fix that. So what we're gonna have to do is actually add a post to that seat. Uh, this side is like snapped off or broken or something, or they cut it off and just fasten these. That's no bueno. So um, I think we're gonna fix it and then we'll make a template probably out of CAD, you know, cardboard aided. And then we'll drill our other hole and get the seat back in and we're gonna be pretty close to finish with the interior here. So this is a uh, original seat stud right there. You can see it's pressed in. It probably has a knurl or something on it. This one is, whoop, she's Wi-Fi. You know what I mean? So that's, uh, we could take this bolt out, that bolt out, get this whole track off and actually fix it uh, off the seat. We might have to do some welding and such, and that way we're not harming the seat in any way. Cause this has been, obviously this is new springs, new foam, you know, new upholstery, uh, everything but the rails itself. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna mess anything up on this. Got the rail off, now we'll grind this smooth and then probably punch it out. Okay. Hmm, it's a square nut. Might have to drill that out. There we go. So this is actually gonna be a lot easier than I thought. Um, no welding required. We're gonna do exactly the same thing they did over here. Just run a bolt through it, nut it, and then this is what sticks through the floor. We'll put a little extra longer one in and then we can get underneath and hack it off if need be, but this should be a simple fix. Well, seat is back together. We've got our post for the back. We're gonna be upgrading the hardware on this, by the way, to some serrated uh, nuts like this and different washers. But anyway, now we can make a template that we can transfer to the floor. This is the hardware they were using. So we can drill another hole in this bad boy. Guy's gonna fire up the CAD machine. Uh, let's see, front. And we should be able to just, you know, boop, boop. And we can do that by just doing that. Don't miss. That would hurt. There we go. Now. We can try to clean this up just a hair. Actually, we just need this one. Now, I just gotta lay this in the car, line a couple up, and then drill some holes. We should have a perfect match. No tape measure, nothing like that. Gotta keep it easy on the brain sometimes. Okay, let's see. Good thing the battery was charged on this. There's one. And really, if I just get two. There's two. That one's 
too short, but I can do that. Now I should be able to drill. Boom. Right there. Thought about this here for a minute. I don't want to put a run in this carpet. It's in great shape by just drilling and catching a snag and it could go and just ruin it. So I sat here and dopped this paint marker and we should have a mark under there now. We do. So I'm gonna get a Rise Air Blaude, they're French, and just cut a little patch here. Or I could take a finger burner and just melt this. This is old, well it's new loop, but this basically just has glue and this really chintzy fabric. They're a repop, you know? If we torch this, it'll bunch everything up and we could drill right through that as well. So we'll see which one I find first, a razor or a finger burner. Pull the combo move! Sorry, didn't mean to yell. Hit her with the finger burner and then follow it up with the Rosier Blade. And you can see how hard and crisp this is. So you can cut really nice, clean squares or circles or whatever. And if you're wondering how you burn carpet without ruining everything, you can't obviously just come in here and do this. Hope. You fire your torch up and you come straight down. Boop! That's all it takes. Well, it's time for a guy to see if and he got even close. Let's see. Not sure what. I think I need to slide that one. Boom. In. Let's get. There we go. Ha! Nailed it. Now I just gotta grab a bolt, or a nut, excuse me, just so I can put it on the front to hold it in place. Then we'll lift the car in and permanently fasten it. Boom. The length's turned out really nice down here, so I don't think I have to do anything. Add a washer to this front one. There we go. Just grabbing more surface area. These serrated don't technically need a washer, but I want to grab more metal underneath here. There. And then I will just spritz that with rubber undercoating. Get these drain plugs. There we go. Ah. Seats back in. Couple small details here, easy fixes. We've got like a rear seat truck Chevrolet floor mat. Nope, that's gotta go. I got something better. I've got here some official GM restoration original floor mats. We're gonna throw these in. Not only are they gonna fit correctly, they're gonna look great. And they are as close as you can get to what was in the car originally. That looks significantly better than we had a cheesy carpet one back here. Now I just got to swing over, button up that side, and then the last thing we're going to do is actually hang a rear view mirror in this thing.
So the first thing a guy had to do is figure out what's center, center, center. Now, it's a different feel than a tape measure. You can tape this out, but this stuff is squishy, it flexes. I more so go off of things that are fixed, like the speaker grate, trim, stuff like that. This little tiny dot is my reference point after I mess with it there. Look at that flag blowing. Yes, sir. So that is where I'm going to put the mirror. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, the mirror hangs off of the ceiling. Yes, this year there's some fixings up here. The bracket comes in here and everything and hangs off. But I decided to go with a newer style mirror, which has the standard bracket. And that is where we're going to put this guy right here. And it's going to work great. It's going to be sleek. It's all black. There's no chrome. It'll look nice. Just using this little kit here. It's got the scratcher Roonies and the Razor Blade and the juice and everything. It's like 13 bucks. It's got everything you need. The guy's got to swing around with the Windex again, but we've alcohol wiped it. We've put the activator on. Now we got the glue and this is the hangy button doodabber. Let's see. Yep. Yep. So a little bit more pressure, about two minutes, three minutes. We'll let go. And then I'll come back and clean this up and then we can hang the mirror. Boom! We've got marriage. That looks pretty good. Well, the guy's got the interior finished up or what we're going to call finished with the time that we have anyway. But listen, it looks nice. It's neat. It's clean. It's organized. It's simple and virtually everything is brand new with the exception of a couple small things. But hey, whoever wins this car, it's going to give them something to do to tinker on a little bit. Speaking of tinkering, we've got to move to this trunk. Sounds simple, but this is actually a pretty big and evolved project. I just don't want a plain Jane trunk. Yeah, I could spray bomb this thing and just send it down the road, but this particular car, I'm not used to the shiny paint and it's making me feel a little woozy. And I got different thoughts in the brain buckets. I think this has got to look better than just a typical trunk. So let's dig in. It's going to be a really late night but I want this to be great. I want the whole car to be just excellent. So let me get some tools, materials, explain what's going on, we'll dig in. Okay, we got a carpet kit here and it's just like the base or the floor. It's a loop and I got the better one that's all trimmed out and everything. But this isn't all we're doing. You see, if we throw that in here, it could look pretty decent, pretty standard trunk. Uh, by the way, I put some rubberized undercoating around all the seams and seals late last night so it could dry. And um, you can kind of see it in there, covered all that stuff. It's good to go. But anyway, we lay that carpet in. It would look pretty good if we had everything painted completely and everything like that. But I want to take it a step further and actually box this trunk in with carpet. So there'll be a panel here, a panel back here actually panel in the front of course and a panel on the side and it'll make a nice boxed carpeted area and kind of a kind of a custom trunk deal it does take a little bit of the room away but what are you going to throw back up at, way up in there nothing so let's just hide all that garbly gook and uh, we can make it look really nice so we need some board stock and some material so here's some templates I've been working on testing a stapler over here. This side I've got finished cut out. This side is uh, just kind of the outline. Got to finish cutting that out as well. This will be the front board or the farthest forward board. Thin material, light. But this will be our foundation to the project. Then over here on the workbench, we got some black loop carpet. And uh, I can't remember how many yards this is, but basically we could just throw it up here. This is the back side, of course. We'll throw it up here, mark out what we need, cut it, and start constructing these boards. All right, so first step, of course, is let's just throw this in, get it out of the way, and let it start conforming to the trunk design. It should be really close. 
Yeah, there we go. By the way, if you're on a budget and you're looking to spruce your car up, don't think that throwing in some nice carpet isn't enough. It is. Okay, I'm just wanting to go a little bit more for you guys, that's all. This looks fantastic. It looks really nice, I'll show you. Absolutely nothing wrong with a nice clean trunk. Coat it or paint it, throw some carpet in. Looks great. I'm just gonna try to take it a little bit farther. May backfire, I don't know. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, so a guy got one of these trunk panels done and I wanted to just get one finished up so you can kind of see the look we're going for. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do this step-by-step -step at home. And it doesn't matter if it's in your basement or your living room or the front porch or in your carport or garage. You guys can do this at home. So let's look at the before and after here and then we'll go whip one up. So here's the side of the trunk. Obviously we've got that carpet laid in here again. And I'm wanting to hide kind of just this random ugliness, right? Just block it off and make it look cleaner. And we're gonna do the same in the front. So here's kind of what it looks like without the panel. And here's what it looks like with the panel in it. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to do this right at home, super easy and quick. So here's my workbench here. It's a 78, works pretty good. Here's the things that you're gonna need. Uh, good scissors or Rosser Blade, just some typical adhesive. This is just Permatex. A plier doesn't hurt to have. I always carry one on the hiptus. Otherwise, what, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And then a stapler. I've got severe arthritis and carpal tunnel, so I use a digital one, but just a plain old snappy, uh, stapler will work. This is just a 3 8 10 millimeter staple. It's a flat crown. And what that means is, here's your staple shape. It's flat on the top because we're trying to grab this material and hold it down and have the most surface pressure. Instead of having a crown crown, which is like an up or like a bubble shape, that's for like cabling and wires and stuff like that. Just a flat crown, three eighths, and typically whatever your material depth is will change the length of the staple, but a three eighths, 10 millimeter is pretty standard for upholstery work. This is just loop, black carpet. I get it by the yard, and it's significantly cheaper than buying kits or whatever, pre-cut stuff or anything like that. This is what they mold carpet panels out of um, it's exactly what they made the trunk thing out of. Uh, but if you're doing anything different, like door panels or kickers or trunk panels or anything like that, or, you know, deck lids, this stuff will work just fine. You can see where I cut this out, but let's go through the process quick. I had a blemish down here I needed to get rid of, so it's going to be a little bit different over here. Okay, so I chose to buy this kit, and this is like literally balsa wood. This is really light, flimsy uh, material. And these are pre-cut panels made specifically for the 68 Nova. And they were, I think about 180 bucks, okay? Which is a lot of money, let's be honest. But the alternative, you can make your own if you have the time. Um, I would start by using like construction paper cutting it and using tape and you'll come up with a shape pretty much just like this and then you would trace that on hardy board or balsa board like this for your final product. Now to be honest, if I were to do that, it would probably take me mm, to do it good, probably half a day, honestly, because we got to go up around the trunk springs, we got to go around the latch, uh, it's quite a bit, so you have to figure out, you know, do you have the time investment or is it better off just buying the panels that should fit? So don't worry if you don't want to splurge, you can make these on your own, it's absolutely possible. So we're going to lay it out here, I don't have like a um, upholstery table or anything like that, and by the way, I'm not an upholstery guy. I do janky enough stuff to get by. <laughs> here we are. So I'm laying this out. I want to make sure that I have 
enough material that I can fold this over and get all the way onto my board. You don't want to put this right to the edge of your material, right? So I'm going to kind of lay this out and just confirm, yep, I've got just enough material to cover this. We should be fine. Now you'll notice on here, I've got a note that says carpet. That's a dummy note. You can do the first one either side, it doesn't matter. But the second one, you better get right. Because once you glue this on and staple it, you're done, right? So this is the side that needs the carpet. So it's actually going to go this way, like that. Step one, we're gonna glue this puppy up, okay? And then we're gonna go pretty close to the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. Something like this. Don't get this stuff on your hand. It's just like anti-seeds. You're never gonna get it off. Coat the whole panel. Most professionals will tell you to do your panel and your product. I don't know. I've just done the panel, especially since I'm stapling it. I haven't really had an issue. There you can see I missed and got some on the truck. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. I'll clean it off, never. Okay, so, and then I like to do a couple heavy zigzags. Okay, she's glued up. Where'd my razor go? This razor might be shot. We're gonna wait just a little bit. We want the glue to be tacky, and that's where we're gonna Flip it on here. In the meantime, I'm gonna grab a new razier because we need that thing sharp. It's gonna take a tremendous amount of cutting to get this set for stapling. There we go. Now she's tacky. So we're gonna flip this over to our carpet note, making sure we have enough material to go all the way around this. Slide this on my workbench here. Okay, there we go. Now the next step is we need to get our cutting pattern. It's gonna take a few minutes for this to adhere. So while that's happening, I'm gonna take a paint marker. You could take a, whatever you want. Something that scribes. And you don't even really need to do this if you're really handy. But I'm gonna come around here and just make a mark. There we go. I'm going about um, two inches, two to three inches around this. We just need enough material to pull up by hand and adhere. There we go. So that's done. We're gonna let this dry, set up for probably, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. I got plenty of tools to clean up, other things to do, trashes to take out. And then we'll come back and finish this up. So we're back. Should be pretty tacked up. Now we're just gonna cut this out. Kind of the first step. And then we have to make a bunch of cuts that will allow us to fold the material properly over our template. Try not to hit my show quality paint here underneath. Okay. You can see why and I prefer a razor blade. It's very fast. Easier on the wristuses. Okay, now, what we have to do, obviously we can't fold around corners. See how it makes all this stuff? It's not going to work. So we have to go around here. Yeah, we're gonna cut reliefs all the way around this board. But when we do this, we don't wanna cut 
right to the board, right to the material. We want to leave at least the thickness of whatever this is. So if your board is an eighth of an inch, leave an eighth of an inch. If it's a quarter, leave a quarter. That's so when you fold it, you don't have exposed material in your fold. So right away I know I can come off every corner. And when we come off the corners, we're gonna make triangles. Because when I fold that up, we need to have a lack of material that allows it to work around that corner. See, so if I pull this up and I pull this up, they're okay. But look, when I pull this up, they're interfering. So I need more of an angle. See how that's fine now? So we're gonna have to go around this whole thing. And again, when we cut this, we're leaving material here. We want that to be the same thickness at minimum. So when we fold this over, it's not bare. And this is time consuming and it is quite a bit of work. But this is one of those steps that's gonna make it look a little bit better. And it's going to help the quality of the product. See how I'm kind of testing this as I go around. Firm pressure with a razor blade. Quick, quick movements will make this go a lot faster. Again, on long areas like this, I'm just looking kind of where the bend is, start of the radius, which is like right about there. Just be careful now. This could put a guy out of commission real quick. If this razor blade goes the wrong direction or gets a finger instead of carpet. Moses, sandals, that would be a bad day. This is a really weird one here. There we go. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. I know it looks crazy. Just trust the process. Next step, more glue. Weird, right? So now we'll come in and we want to get the edge. Right where we're going to be folding over. Try not to go too far because it's just going to get all over your hands. And if you want, you can get the Here's where the pros, I'm sure, are right. I don't know what I'm doing, so let's listen to them. We'll hit the underside of our material. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute, tack up, and then we'll staple. 
Oh, Moses, don't blast the hood. <laughs> so now that this is tacked up, nice and sticky, we're just gonna go around and fold all this up. See the glue actually holds it pretty good. But we're gonna run staples in all of this just to make sure that nothing comes undone. But the bigger pieces, we'll start in the middle and then we'll work our way out. And then the smaller tabs around corners, we wanna make sure that we give definition to the actual corner. So I like to start on the corner and then over. So let's get this stapled up here, see how it turns out. Milwaukee likes to do two staples at once sometimes. Small adjustment there. I'm gonna go to this corner first, make sure we don't lose that. This is a bigger piece. I'm gonna make sure that this is making sense. Just making sure I got it pulled all the way up to the board. Adjustment. You might miss some of this, no big deal. This takes a second. This is why pliers are a good idea. Here we go. And look at that. One complete panel. Not so bad, right? You guys can do this at home. Promise you. Let's go put it in. It is super late at night, but I'm gonna at least start on this front panel. It's the same process, and look how good this trunk is looking. But it's a lot more complicated. We've got curves everywhere in a big notch here. So there's gonna be some 45s, things of that nature. But I'm gonna get started. It should come, I think right here, actually, straight down. So we're losing, again, we're losing a little bit of trunk space, but I don't think you're gonna be putting anything up there. And the great thing is, if you wanna add speakers or something like that, this panel comes right out. Put your speakers in. Put your amplifier back here. Whatever you're going to put back there. You know, six-pack cold snacks. Put the thing back. And then you got a really nice finished off trunk in here. Good enough for a suitcase and a cooler. What else you need? Okay, I got the last piece finished up. Let's see how it fits in here. Hold 
these should kind of push together. So far I'm happy with it. Yes, sir. Wow. Yep. Finished. Well, there we have it. One custom trunk build. That looks fantastic. And the interior makeover went really well. Wow, it looks sharp and clean. And now we've got one really good looking hot rod. Bumper to bumper, inside and out, trunk, under the hood, inside, outside, underneath, you name it. That's going to do it for this episode, but listen, I'm out of time. i got to have this thing ready for one lucky winner. So coming up next, got to finish this engine, got to get it fired, got to get it tuned. Speaking of tuned, talk to a friend, and turns out we're going to be hauling this thing to Florida for a certain draft to get on the keys. We're going to strap this thing to a dyno see what it can do, get it nice and tuned, do some street tuning as well. And of course, I'm bringing you along for all of that. And the cherry on top, we still haven't talked about tires and wheels. And as a reminder, you guys can win this beautiful 68 Chevrolet Nova and $15,000 cash. All you've got to do is go over to vicegripgarage.com, snag yourself up any kind of merchandise you want. We've got zip-up hoodies, pullover hoodies, go in the town shirts, We've got the thick flannel jackets. We've got patina preservers, shine juice, clear coat, hood saver 6,000, cups, keychain. I mean, anything you can think of. You can literally wipe your Christmas list out. And while you're at it, you can win some points towards this car. And as a reminder, if something you want, maybe doesn't have the size in stock, grab a gift card. That's the secret sauce. Hang on to that thing. The value goes towards the giveaway. And when it comes back in stock, Bam! Snag that thing up. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate you so very much. And stay tuned. More is coming very, very quick.